Hello, Saints Nation, and welcome back here to the broadcast. My name, once again, Jackson Fry Brown, still joined alongside Kaylee here. No Hello. changes to be made on the Castor <laughs> deck, and it is going to be week five of Collegiate League of Legends, St. Clair Saints versus Hutchinson University here. And St. Clair up 1 0 already to start us off here. Yeah. Or is it Hutchinson College? I think it's Hutchinson's College. So, yep. Yeah, community college there. So St. Clair up 1 0 in the game. They uh, came through with a very dominant victory in game number one, and they are looking to run it back here for game number two and end off the series. It's definitely going to be another fun game. Honestly, I'm happy with how the last game ended up. They definitely put up a really good fight against St. Clair, which we don't get to see all the time, but I'm happy that we did get to see it today. Now, one thing, we do get to see Ricky play top lane again in this round. Yeah, we do see Ricky coming back into the game, so he will be here for the game two, and uh, that's going to be definitely interesting to see. So Hutchinson did ban out Jax last time around. Yes. It's more important to ban out Jax yeah. now that Ricky is back. <laughs> you have to ban, as, I, as we discussed last time, you got to ban Jax, you have to ban Darius, and you have to ban Aatrox. It's three strongest top laners. He does have a little bit of pocket pick, but... That's Who knows? Three out of five bands <laughs> just all focused on a top but lane. That would be crazy. You gotta think. Look at all the open champions, though. There's so many different people that you could play. Hey isn't there like 160 in the game or something there like that? There is, right? so. I believe, with the new champ that just came out that we sadly don't get to see if they do Hey, they, they play should it. just let them play. Like, yeah. It came out Thursday, oh, throw it in the mix. Exactly. <laughs> That's how I think. But I believe with her, it does go up to 159 champions, which is insane. Like, I can't even imagine all the creativity needed in order to make that many characters. Remembering all the characters' names is pretty difficult task as well. <laughs> to That's come what through. you think, but it just it, when you start to play, it just burns into your brain, and Fair you don't enough. forget it. Fair enough. So regardless, Saint Clair having, like you said, Ricky back in the top yep. lane for this game, they are looking to shut things down in that matter. Um, last game I think ended after about 20 minutes or so around that marker. So Saint Clair looking to do so once again coming through in the game too. But yes, like you were saying, Hutchinson, they came through with a lot of plays that were very mm -hmm. very strong, and they definitely had some potential moments. That shutdown they had on, I think it was Ver. Or what there was a big shutdown on the on Verge. He was able to get, I think it was a 650 gold yeah, bounty crazy. for the Irelia. And now, here's the thing. Irelia might have not been so strong in that game at the start, but the second that she got that bounty, he, she was able to do so much more damage to St. Clair. And it was a little oh, bit yeah. scary for a few seconds, but they were able to pull it off. They were able to secure the win. And, and they we, got that dragon. That, that dragon, they yeah. took it down nice and quick. I mean, they had that opportunity there as well, giving themselves some benefits. Uh, you know, the dragon giving them those perks as well mm -hmm. to help out with whatever needed. Yeah. And uh, St. Clair, yeah, they, they are going to be tested a little bit here. I still have St. Clair as my favorite going into this <laughs> game, but I think that Hutchinson is definitely putting up some some sort of a fight, some sort of a challenge here for, for sure. the Saints. They definitely know when to use the, like, how to use the map correctly, because especially with what you said about that drag pick, it was a really, really good call, mm -hmm. because you not only do you get that buff from the drag, but but also you get to deny from St. Clair. That drag, I believe, it was a cloud drake, meaning that not only do they get movement speed, but they also get ultimate cooldown. I'm, I can't remember exactly if that's what it still is, but it should be something like that. Just some cooldown reduction so they're able to use their abilities faster. And that's exactly what you don't want. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so regardless <laughs> of that being said, we are going to be getting ready to hop into the game number two draft here in just a moment as everybody is getting their picks coming through. And yeah, like now with Ricky coming in, if mm -hmm. Hutchinson has watched VODs, they're going to focus Focus more on top lane bands. Oh, for sure. I don't know a lot of his pocket picks, in all honesty, but maybe we'll see something interesting. I know that one, the one time we did see him pick Silas, Silas is definitely an interesting champion, but we do get to see here. So, is there any champions that you want to see again from last game? Um, if you remember their names. No, I think a <laughs> Nautilus wouldn't be the worst idea. I mean, it's been a very, very good supportive character as of lately in the game. The hook, so strong. For sure. Um, there to, you know, pull these fights into action. So if, I'd like to see Nautilus, especially with how meta it has been, especially lately as well. Um, But even bigger thing I'm looking for, like the most ideal thing I'm looking for is these Hutchinson top lane bands. For sure. Now, I gotta I gotta break it to you, Jackson. We don't get to see Gwen or Zeri this game. I, I, man, I know, or, right? Or last it sucks. Like, no <laughs> No Zeri all series long. What can you do, man? I but mean, can you really blame Hutchinson for bla for banning Zeri after they got the pentakill on her? That was a nice, really nice play made by them. But we do get to see the Fiora ban again. So I'm wondering if Hutchinson mains those two champs a lot. Hey, St. Clair must have done their review here then. It's mm -hmm. just knowing some of these bands coming through. And your beloved Jinx all gone and out of this one already. It's Back never going to happen band. again. <laughs> Hutchinson not letting St. Clair come through with that one. Jinx very meta right now as well. And like crazy meta actually. Like mm -hmm. one of like probably I'd say top 10, top 15 in the character select or champ select. More like top 5 top for all. ADCs. Okay, okay. <laughs> for ADCs, yes. For ADCs. <laughs> but St. Clair going to be here on the other end. I still 
coming through with more of their bands. And the Caitlyn, once again, coming in for Hutchinson, uh, <laughs> will be another ban. So no support from the Caitlyn's for Sinclair. Nope. We do also see the Camille ban, but then we do see the Rise pick again. Now, last game, Zephyrot played Rise really well. He knew exactly what to do against that Irelia. Wait until she uses her cooldowns to go in and then just able to lock her down and do the exact same amount of damage back. So then Irelia can't do much. Now we do see the Heimer Digger pick. So if you guys were here last, um, right before we did our little break here, there is an arcane meta and Heimerdinger is a part of Arcane, so he is a decent champion to play right now. He has those little turrets that you can place around um, the map, and they deal so much damage that when you go in, it's really, really hard to lock him down. Yeah, very, very good stuff there. Now, so many more champs. Like, okay, so the Heimerdinger we see actually played like a little bit more often, mm -hmm. but a lot of champs that we aren't seeing crazy often. Like, I'm, honestly, I've never seen this champ be played. Uh, that's Nami. <laughs> Nami is a support. So all she does is she basically just sprays water on you and it gives you health back. Oh, hey. <laughs> to put it simple. Self, man. Get, hydrate, you know? Get, exactly. Get you gotta HTL. stay hydrated. All the gamers have to stay hydrated. Exactly. You know, to make sure you have that nice water bottle next to you there. So more of these picks coming through. Now St. Clair with that one. Why don't you break down that a little bit, Kaylee? So Zaya is an ADC. Zaya uh, has these feather daggers that she throws at. And we actually do get to see the duo bot lane as Rakan and Zaya. Now, here's an interesting thing. These two champions came out together because in the lore, they're in a relationship. So that means that Rakan and Zaya have both empowered abilities if they're played together in the lane. So it's definitely going to be something really interesting. So do you typically ever see one picked without the other, or is it typically always both picked? That's the ironic thing. You kind of just see them separated more than together because their buff together isn't as good as they wanted it to be to begin with. Um, Zaya's W basically goes on Rakan, where she, both of them get extra movement speed and extra damage off, and then Rakan can just shield her for, uh, from a further distance than other players on the team. But we do get to see the Syndra pick mid, I like Syndra a lot. Syndra, Syndra's meta right now too, right? Uh, I think she's I think she's decent in the meta. I'm not 100% right. sure. I haven't I, been I playing I see her picked quite often. Um, yeah. Is it somebody that you feel like a lot of players are comfortable with? Oh yeah, she's definitely more on the easier side than the harder side of champions. She has these spears that you put on down on the map and you get, basically just control those to do all your damage. So it's, okay. it's definitely like there is a skill cap there, but it's not that hard to get past. St. Clair going to pick up back with the bands here now and try and take out more of these Hutchinson player pool. And I believe, is that Aatrox that just got banned out from Hutchinson? Yes. Yeah, that so, is Aatrox Hey, man, look Hutchinson. at me go. I'm learning it. I, <laughs> thought you were, I thought you were going to call Viego Aatrox, and I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> wait a minute. So I'm honestly predicting the last band from Hutchinson probably going to be a Jax. Yeah. No. It's actually the Kane. Okay. Honestly, I don't blame them because the Kane last game was really well played. So I'm definitely proud of Fresh for that one. Ricky better pick the Jax. Oh, we better pick it. We better see it, Ricky. Come on. We know you can hear us. $5 on Ricky Jax. Exactly. <laughs> no, but it is going to be the side of the big white polar bear pick for Hutchinson. Why can't oh, yeah, that's Olaf? totally Olaf? No, no. Olaf? No, Olaf is a different champion. That one's the volley bear. <laughs> volley bear. Yeah, there you go. We're working on it. We're working on volley it. Volley bear is basically the thunder bear. He yeah, he's a big tank player too right lots of hp he is a he is considered a bruiser because he has the, all that hp and armor but he does have all that damage as well now here's something for you we have seen ricky play yasuo a few times and i do see a yasuo pick here so i feel like what's gonna happen is that we are gonna see zephyr on top possibly as rise and then we are gonna see ricky as mid lane and if not just gonna be the opposite lane swapped around but we do see the gragas coming in i'm sure you've seen gragas yeah for times. sure yeah Yes, Gregus, uh, he's one of those heavy hitting characters as well, I do believe, right? Where he can inflict a lot there's, of that damage. Yeah, there's two different builds that you can go on him. You can go full AP to make sure that you just one shot anybody with yeah. your barrels, or you can actually go this really tanky build, and it's called a chem, ta uh, chem tank mythic item. And it's really interesting because you activate it and then you get movement speed when going towards enemies. What do you typically see more often? Going for the tanky build or going for like the one shot kind of build? Definitely the tanky build right now because that item is so broken. You don't understand. <laughs> um, basically just free movement speed and a little bit of damage mixed in with it. But we do get to see the Cho'Gath as the last pick for Hutchinson. And... Again, it looks like they're just going for that late game team comp, and I can't blame them. I, I'm someone who plays Jinx. I love late game team comps, but this is definitely going to be a strange matchup with the bot lane, especially. Heimerdinger ADC is definitely going to cause problems for Zaya. Um, Heimer is going to put down those little turrets that basically they auto attack anything that's in their range. So anytime that Zaya is going to try and walk up to do any kind of damage, he, she's just going to get a lot of damage back on her, and it's going to be a struggle.
I'm quite surprised that Hutchinson is once again going for a late game more scaling champion mm -hmm. select, considering how quick that last game ended. You'd think they would go for something more, you know, early game, try to get a lot of this damage off right away, build yourself sure. a quick gold lead, and just try to take the ropes of the game early on, but doesn't seem to be the case. They want to once mm -hmm. again try to go for this late game. And honestly, if Hutchinson could make things last out here, and they could actually just draw on this time, even if they not really wasting time, but if they can just spend a lot more time farming or doing things that doesn't involve turret drop. Uh, mm -hmm. It would really help them out. So Hutchinson will be in the red here now as St. Clair is in the blue. St. Clair with a 1-0 series lead over Hutchinson. If St. Clair wins this game, that will wrap us up. If Hutchinson wins it, we will see a map 3. Now, one thing that's interesting here is that Ricky is actually top lane playing a Yasuo top. Yasuo top is a decent pick, although he is mostly played mid. He, because if when he's played mid, he has that ability to be able to roam bot and top without having to risk losing a lot of uh, pressure mid. But we're definitely going to see an interesting fight top. Actually, it looks like they did swap. It looks like Ricky is actually going mid and Rise is going to... Or, sorry, is that... Or, Barlow. I wasn't expecting that. Okay, so Barlow's the of, mid laner. Uh, Barlow is going mid lane. That is definitely interesting to see. And do you actually want to know something very interesting stat about this division? Uh, no map threes have been played throughout all like I think it's like thirty games or something like that, or like e like twenty five uh, wow. or something along those lines. But we have not seen a map three from any matchup in this division, which is absolutely crazy. After five weeks, all two O's from yeah. each respective school. That's crazy to see, and I think it means this is probably going to favor Saint Clair unless Hutchinson sure. can break the pattern. I honestly, I kind of hope they do because then we'll be in for an entertaining third mm -hmm. game. But one thing about um, the ball lane, see, that's what I was saying there. The Rakan goes in, but Hammerdinger doesn't have his turrets down as m and is able to create that a little bit of pressure, but not as much as he wanted. We do see Ricky getting in some poke on the Sintra top. Everybody's just everywhere today. We get to see Barlow mid, which honestly, I don't remember seeing at all. Yeah, uh, yeah. They're trying no new stuff. I mean, <laughs> to be completely honest, we talked about it already on how the fact that St. Clair is going to use this league right now to try to try out a little bit of new things and to try to try these new champs, uh, new pools, and just everything in that regard. So it is going to be a little bit of a roll swap here as Ricky is diving in onto Terry Todd. Not enough damage inflicted early on. I think Terry Todd will be able to make it out of that fight alive. Ricky going chasing still. Oh, down to turn back around here now for a second as he's actually tagged down super weak. And that is actually going to be the Flames taking him down to 1 HP and will be the kill for Terry Todd. First blood going in favor of Hutchinson. We do see the volume. Bear going in and trying to get his movement speed in order to stun the Zaya and stop her from doing anything and pushing the lane a little bit more, but the gank ended up failing, so they did have to back off. And honestly, that's kill top. I was surprised by. Yeah, uh, me too. It was very early on. Like, we last game, I think we didn't see our first kill until around the four minute, four and a half minute marker. Mm -hmm. uh, but this game, it was like two and a half minutes in, but Barlow will immediately answer back, taking out Warrior, now leaving this one one to one in the kill territory. St. Clair going to have a slight gold advantage. Not nothing to make a big impact on the game. As of yet, everybody's scaling up level wise. We already have Barlow at level four, and clearly a Warrior only level two. That is crazy. Yeah. Uh, the level, the leveling in this game is definitely a little bit weird. Um, the solo laners do end up getting more XP because bot lane does need to share it. But I honestly wasn't expecting him to already be level 4. We do see the Heimerdinger. That's what I was talking about. See that little turret right there? That's what he does. He just sits back and lets the turrets do all the damage that he needs. And just autos here and there to get those final kills. We do see the Rakan uses the W to get in and stun, or sorry, to knock up the Heimerdinger and able to secure the kill for Zaya. It's Whenever, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, carry on. <laughs> it was definitely a good play made by them waiting in that bush until he was able to just walk up the tiniest little bit too far. Whenever I see League of Legends players hiding in bushes, it yeah. always reminds me of that Fortnite bush. Whenever players, you know, throw on that Fortnite bush and you hide in it, and uh, I don't know if you play Fortnite ever, but I have never you know, played it, Fortnite. It's, it, it reminds me of the Fortnite bushes when you're hiding in them, or be like, oh, he's in the bushes. So Saint Clair will come out of there, going on a little bit of a gank, going to benefit them in a kill. Now two to one in that kill tear. Tori, Terry Tug going to be here and slain down from Zephyrot. That is now going to be a 3-1 to one player advantage or kill advantage in the favor of the Saints. And actually a 1.3k gold advantage, not even 5 minutes in. Yeah, we do see that the uh, Syndra and the Cho'Gath swapped lanes again. I'm wondering if that's just because the Syndra had a hard time keeping up with Ricky on the Yasuo here. 
We do see a little bit of poke. We do see Zephyrod actually coming in to try and gank and hopefully get a little turret dive in. Knock up by the Cho'Gath on both Zephyrod and the uh, Ricky, but they're able to get the kill and get it out with no problem. Yeah. Oh, Gonna go for a little extra farm there, trying to take down those minions. Sure. Gonna get the turret to shoot some shots onto him, but he wanted that farm, so regardless, we'll get the gold up here for the Saints, and he will keep his life in the end of it, no regardless as well. So Terry mm -hmm. Ta gonna be here trying to get some farm as well, and that's kind of at this point in the game when you're around like the five to nine minute marker. I feel like it's a lot of farming up, just getting your gold, just playing passive. For no sure. need to really make these huge game-changing plays. You just want to level up your champion. Yeah, we do see the flash onto the Heimerdinger here and the knockup. Rakan has to dash out before he's able to get to get too much damage taken from the turrets. Everybody's just kind of trying their best to maintain their level right now. Jogath is walking up on the Asuo here, trying to get a kill on him. Dodges the knockup from the Jogath and it doesn't look like much is gonna happen. Yeah, so regardless of that being said, St. Clair now with that 4-1 to one kill advantage, but clearly a warrior will answer right back to get down Ricky. Zephyr trying to come in here for a trade. Will get knocked up and airborne. He's now going to go in for this one. Maybe the turret will inflict a little bit too much damage, and he's not too speedy of a character, so mm -hmm. it's going to make him uh, kind of back off that fight there for at least a moment, as Barlow will get a lot of damage inflicted on himself as well. Clearly, Warrior and Zephyr actually getting into a little bit more of an engagement here. That's going to be airborne, and now silence. That's going to be Zephyr falling. Clearly, a warrior has found a few massive picks early on here. That level up on the Cho'Gath was probably the most unlucky thing that could possibly happen in that fight. Cho'Gath ulti, basically, when you're below a certain percent of health, you just get executed. We do see a double, a four-man bot lane gank. The Zai is going to try and use her E to root all the, the Syndra wow. down. Syndra has to use her ulti and is able to take out the Zaya. This is what we were talking about when we saw these mm -hmm. um, bigger plays coming through from Hutchinson. This is exactly what we mean. Hutchinson sure. is actually now coming through and making these big impact plays here on the side of St. Clair. Now 4-4 four, four in the kill department after being down 4-1. They were down about 2,000 gold disadvantage. Now that's broken up nearly in half. Mm -hmm. And uh, everybody from the side of Hutchinson really fighting back here. It all started with clearly a warrior though. Yeah, it looks like the Zephyrot's actually going to try and get around here to steal the blue buff from the Volley Bear and pick up an easy kill for Balo. He failed the flash over the wall. That hurts my heart. Oh my god, the amount of times that I've done that on accident. Yeah, same. But... <laughs> Uh, Same when you don't play the game. <laughs> yeah, I mean, hey, it's, it's it's a killer, right? So St. Clair is going to dive in. There's two players from the side of Hutchinson there. Will get tagged down. Clearly a warrior is going to get divin dived on from Ricky. And the damage is there. The big infliction and the cleanup nice. will be there. Clearly the warrior will get shut down now and will get taken out of this one. That's actually now 150 gold bounty on the side of Barlow. That was, the fight bot lane there was beautiful. I don't know if you caught it, but the Ryze ended up hiding in a spot where the enemy couldn't get any vision on him, ulted in both himself and the Gragas, and Gragas was able to run towards the bush, flash, and knock them up to cancel all their back animations, or uh, back channels, so then they were able to pick up those two kills with no problem. That is what, exactly what you like to see. So St. Clair was just at a 4-4 kill count here. Now 8-4, to four, they've really increased their... Uh, Revenue here, their income coming in into their bank as with those four kills. It is going to be around the 16k marker here now where Hutchinson is struggling to get over that $12,000 marker mm -hmm. as uh, it is going to be no turrets down still. So nothing really like massive game changing happening as of yet. But if you think about it, after we were nine minutes into the last game, St. Clair already had, I think, like two turrets down mm -hmm. and a much larger gold lead. So Hutchinson doing a good job of at least keeping themselves in this one. Yeah, definitely. I'm honestly very happy, and I might have... Maybe I jinxed it by saying that I wanted to see three games today. <laughs> hey, you never know, man. It's the caster's curse. Uh, I know that you might not have uh, been casting for a crazy amount a long time, but no. Barlow with the kill there. But yeah, I mean, the caster's curse, I know me and Danners, we experience it on a daily basis <laughs> where, uh, you know, we'd be like, oh yeah, this should be uh, this should be a pretty, uh, you know, quick cleanup or something like that. But then no, caster's curse will always come into effect. There's another big pick coming in on a soul mage, and that is now going to be 10 for St. Clair. Merge trying to inflict some damage onto these turrets. And like you were saying, yeah, those turrets inflict actually quite a bit. Yeah, that's the thing about them. They're so tiny and like you, you sometimes I They're even so mistake cute. them. I know. <laughs> They're so tiny and little and adorable, but um, they you, they look like minions, so you don't expect them to do so much damage, but it looks like we are going to get a dive here 
from both the duo bot lane and they're able to pick up a, a kill for Barlow. Nice ulti off of the Gragas on for the uh, Cho'Gath there for Ricky to pick up another kill. They're just dropping like flies just like last time. Barlow does get caught by the Syndra stun there, but he's able to get out with no problem. And it looks like they're going to try and get the turret here, actually. So is respawn time determined on how late of the game you're in, how many times you've dropped, or like, do you know kind of what the factor for respawn time is here, Gilly? Um, so the respawn, it the timer for that, it goes, it gets longer the longer that the game goes on. But sometimes, from what I've heard, I'm not sure if it's true, but it's also dependent on your KDA. Okay, yeah. okay. So interesting stuff. Yeah, because you see here with only a 20 second respawn right there for mm -hmm. the side of Hutchinson right now on clearly a warrior. But when we get into these late games, it's going to get turned up to, you know, 45, 50. And that's yep. when things start to become killer. Uh, when you are losing a, such a valuable asset to your team for such a long point of time, especially warrior here coming through, being one of these more tanky uh, damage inflicting characters, mm -hmm. uh, losing him is definitely going to hurt. Ricky, though, looking to take down the first turret of the game. And that is going to be it going in favor of St. Clair. Yeah, we did see Barlow there trying so hard to get the kill on Cinder, but we do see Zephyr coming around the corner and able to secure that kill finally for Barlow after chasing her for so long. And it looks like they're just going to try and do some rotations around the map in order to get some kind of advantage for their Hutchinson right now. Yeah, so it is looking like they are going to go hunting for King Magma here. Soul Mage and Soul Regality are both going to be here to try to help out. So Zephyroth, though, inflicting so much damage in here now. And that is going to be him getting stunned down. And he actually could lose his life. He's just looking for King Magma. But no, Soul Mage will be there for the cleanup. Now Phase and Verge diving in on this play. This is a full-on team fight here between all of these guys. Mm -hmm. And now that is Barlow taking down one as well. So two for one so far in favor of St. Clair. Soul Mage now stuck in here, getting pinched by Barlow and Phase. More members of St. Clair along the back line being Verge ready to hunt this one out. They are looking for Soul Mage, but Soul Mage backing way up into his spawn, not allowing to give it to St. Clair. St. Clair with a lot of map control right now, and they are pushed up very, very deep into Hutchinson's base. Now, we did see that the Syndra was able to secure the shutdown on Barlow, so that's 900 gold in her pocket. That's insane, and it could probably help her get the last, her mythic item right now. That'll boost up her stats in order to deal some more damage. Looks like they're trying so hard to get a kill, to get a knockdown, or knock up on her. Sai is going to have to ult and get both all the feathers out in order to take bo out both Syndra and Heimerdinger here, trying to kite as much as possible, just until Ricky is able to get in and get wow. his ulti off. Wow. And that was beautiful. Yeah, that just, like, it looks so clean. So much damage yeah. inflicted in such a short time span. And it's going to now give St. Clair another oh, kill the, here on the yeah. Soul Regality. That is the ace. And that is going to be St. Clair now up 21 to 7, tripling the kills over from the side of Hutchinson. And they are looking to keep the pressure on. Maybe looking for more turrets here now as they will drop this one. Last plate will fall, and that is going to be the turret down. So more money in St. Clair's bank as well. As we see gold 18k now compared to the 29.1k of St. Clair. Now, Jax or Jackson, if you ever play League and you want to be disrespectful, all you have to do is just get an enemy low enough, and if your ignite's up, just ignite and walk away. <laughs> hey, it's man. called the fadeaway kill. <laughs> <laughs> what is this, basketball? Maybe what? it is. <laughs> Regardless. I mean, it's that stressful. Hey, true. So, Terry Tuck <laughs> is going to be here and against FaZe. FaZe is going to try to just back off this fight as a little bit for now, getting away from this turret so he's not getting tagged by two of these players. As Zephyrot, is he soloing this dragon? Yeah, that's the funny thing. Um, a lot of people don't really reckon, or realize that, but junglers are able to take the drakes by themselves. And they did actually get the Hextech Drake, which is perfect for their team because they do have all that damage coming out and that attack speed, which will be able to help them out a lot. Does look like they're going to pick up two kills here and for the Zaya. So it's definitely going to be. Hmm. Mm, there we are. We're, we're all we good. Go. We're all good. Sorry about that. Sorry about that, everybody. But we're back in action here. Now St. Clair going to be up 23-7 to 7 in the kill department. Two turrets down here. Now both teams with a dragon. And uh, But like you were saying, yeah, St. Clair will get that. I think it's called, what is it, like the Earth Dragon? Is that what it's kind of the called? The one that St. Clair just picked up? Yeah, yeah. That's called the Hextech Drake. Hextech Drake. Hex -tech -tech -tech. So, yeah, it, it really fits their comp well is what you are yeah, saying. Though. Yeah, it gives them a, um, a little attack speed boost. And if they do end up getting the soul, then there is an old item called Static Shiv where it would send an electric bolt between anybody that you hit within range. And it, that's what the Hextech Drake does now, so if they are able to secure that, that's going to be insane, and it fits them quite perfectly, honestly. So it's definitely going to be a good Drake for them. And we do see Zephyrot go in on the red buff here. Volibear is going to have to flash over the wall on in front of Ricky and knock him up. The BM of just standing there menacingly while the enemy runs at you. 
Yeah, so here we are here now with St. Clair up 24 to 7 in the kill department. Soul Mage on the back line trying to do whatever she can there, but it's not a whole lot as we do have the side of Ricky, I believe. No, Zephron actually will pick up that one. Taking it down. Here's a big Shelly going to come through. That should take out the turret, and that's going to be that turret down. Now, Shelly, if you can get one more charge off, it would be so beneficial to St. Clair. Just mm -hmm. taking out down all of these turrets. Now, I think it, that is all the turrets in the lanes, unless there's just a couple more. Yep, they just have the one in mid and then the one in bot. We didn't even we weren't even able to explain what was going on in that fight because that's how fast Verge one shot everybody with that Kraken Slayer build. It's definitely hard to play against Kraken Slayer. Every third auto attack is an empowered one. Yeah, uh, so. <laughs> 33% of your attacks being empowered is definitely not what you like to see if you're from the side of Hutchinson. Mm -hmm. uh, you're staring into the eyes of death almost at that point as Barlow is going to be here. He actually is going to get poked out. He's forced to run away and he's going to be long gone by the time these players are trying to catch him up. So that's going to be very, very good stuff from him as we now see two 700 gold bounties on the side of St. Clair, one of which is on Ricky, the other of which is on Burge. That is going to be the mid turret down. Now only one more turret to take out and that will be the bot lane. We do see that St. Clair has a uh, 18k gold advantage, which is insane. Again, all those bounties on the champions on St. Clair's side. We do see Rakan going in for the knockoff on the Heimerdinger, but it's stopped by the Heimerdinger stun. They're in this really weird spot right now. These are the kind of spots that I hate the most, because it's like you want to go in, but you can't, but you really want to. It's definitely going to be interesting to see how they get in. This is when you're like on the verge of closing out the game, but yeah. like you just can't force it because that's how you lose games. Exactly. Right? So exactly. you, you got to wait for your opportunity. That's exactly what they're doing right now. Just staying on this grass is the best way I could explain it. Just staying a little bit out, but here's the dive. Ricky's unstoppable fighting these massive kills. He's going way in deep. He will lose his life, but this is so many shutdowns coming in favor of St. Clair, ending off all of these plays. Barlow over here alone now trying to take on these fights. So much damage inflicted. Look at that snipe. We'll get that player down now. Soul Regality here as well. Looking for it. And then Barlow will find two massive picks there for the Saints. That's an ace coming through. Everybody is knocked out of this one for the side of Hutchinson. St. Clair going to channel back to their home base, regain Poor some Barlow. health. But you know, beautiful <laughs> plays from the side of St. Clair. Poor Barlow on the other side, not being able to walk through the turret without taking damage and just having to see his team leave him there. Um, but that was definitely a beautiful play. As you were saying earlier, you don't want to force it. And that's the thing with when you're in that kind, that exact state. You don't want to push the turret because you can risk getting knocked up or you can risk getting stunned and losing the fight. But luckily, St. Clair was able to wait it out and tried to put a little bit of pressure ball in and caught them off guard and was able to get those kills for Ricky. And it was such a beautiful knock up from, with the Yasuo Tornado. It was definitely top tier play. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's been top tier play all game long, all day long mm -hmm. here for the Saints so far, as they're now up 32 to 8 in the kill department, a 43.9k to 24.1k gold advantage. They have six turrets down, and they are not looking to slow down anytime soon. Barlow wow. will get slain. No, never mind. That's going to be Soul Mage losing his life, and St. Clair looking for more, as it is going to be clearly a warrior here falling as well, and that is going to be Soul Regality, Soul Mage, and clearly a warrior all out of this one, and Terita. So King Magma, literally all on you right now for the next 15 seconds. We did see Verge go in for that 1v2 like he did last game against their ball lane, but was able to pick up both kills. Sadly, did it end up dying at the end. We do see them picking up the kill on the Volibear here with no issues at all. Looks like they're just going to try and push for the end here, but we do see that the Nami and the Syndra and Cho'Gath are actually going to be up soon, so they might be able to defend in time before St. Clair can close up the game. Yeah, that would be very big for them. This is their last hope here, right? I mean, at this point in time, you have to force St. Clair out of your zone or else this will be game over and St. Clair will take down that Nexus. Uh, regardless of that being said, though, St. Clair, do they have any inhibs yet? Mm -hmm. they, they, do do, they did just pick up another one from Ricky bot lane and they did also pick up top lane. So they do have those super minis coming to help them out in base. We do see Verge trying his best to make it there in time. And Barlow's trying to inflict as much damage as possible using his Rise Q that bounces between people in order to do damage to all of them all at once. And it's definitely, they're just back in that rough spot again where you want to force it, but you also can't. It's better for them to wait for Verge to come back into the fight so that then they have everybody there. And just for these in case. super minis. 
The super minis are about halfway across the map here right now, uh, mm -hmm. from the top lane and the bot lane, and they're both looking to make their way in and collide. This will definitely help out the side of St. Clair to have their support, uh, just knowing how much stronger those minions are. Two players so we're going airborne. Beautiful There's a double out. for the side of Verge. That's going to work out so perfectly. And now St. Clair with already having two of those players down. They're looking to get the cleanups onto these final three. So Regality going to be the next one to drop here. And Zephra will take that one. Actually, will go down from the turrets, though. So as, oh, sorry. As we were saying, we we were mentioning earlier that you don't want to force that fight. But sadly, St. Clair did force that fight a little bit too rough. So they were able to, uh, Heptington were able to pick up those kills and those shutdowns on everybody. So they do have extra, a little bit of extra gold in their pocket, but we do see Barlow coming up, try, trying to force a fight here. Definitely going to be interesting. He was able to get enough damage on the Volley Bear to push him back into base to, in order to heal up, and we do see him kiting out this choke at like a madman. Flashes a stun from the Syndra and able, wow. is able to pick up the kill with no problem. Almost dodges a Q from the Choga, stunt roots him and gets a, almost picks up another kill. Sadly gets hit by the Nami bubble and but gets got taken two. out. He did get two. That's crazy. Like, I mean, for you to dive in by yourself, and essentially, yeah, he only got two there, and like, not everyone was fighting him, but it was essentially a one-on-five. Like, oh, you're yeah, going 100%. in to the enemy base by yourself. Your whole team is back on the back line. It's going to really work out in favor of St. Clair, just even finding two picks. Because now, look at when the rest of St. Clair comes in to actually fight this, you don't have Terita, you don't have clearly a warrior, and those are two players that are pretty vital to your success here. As now St. Clair diving in, going to send two players airborne. So much damage inflicted, trying to get King Magma back out here. Ricky says, no, you're not going in there and healing today we are going to take you out and take you down st Clair just inflicting even more damage and this might do it here kaylee i think so as well it looks like they're just going to close out this game as quickly as possible and it was definitely an interesting one i'm proud with how both teams played and we do see verge going into the uh, fountain purely just to kill the central one last time before they they and close out the game hey you, you gotta get those kills up right i oh, mean that's, you gotta got a those cute little message thank you for the games how sweet. That's awesome. That's what you like to see, the sportsmanship between two Hell teams, yeah. right? So 46 to 16 kill department there. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Like, that is in 22 minutes. You're yeah. averaging yourself over two kills a minute. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can't imagine. Those don't happen in my games. I want it to I, happen in my games. <laughs> uh, but St. Clair, yes, will take down Hutchinson in 2 fashion. And I believe that's all of regular season for Seawall. Yep. That's all five games that they do play. There are six teams in the division. They play each team once after five mm -hmm. over the course of five weeks. Every Saturday, we've been coming out here and uh, doing some Seawall. Now, I think next Saturday, we got to still come out here, but do Seawall playoffs. Or yes. we might have like a break or something. I'm not exactly sure what the whole format is it's for Seawall playoffs. You don't know what to expect. Yeah. And <laughs> I'm just excited to go into these playoffs and mm -hmm. to go in with the success that the Saints have been having. A 5-0 yeah. run in the regular season, absolutely phenomenal. It's insane. Um, I I honestly was was speechless about it the last time that I heard that I saw them play. They just they know e each other so well, and we do get to see the scoreboard here. Ricky going 10 and 5, wow. and including Verge, not only going extre like playing extremely well. I think he was around like 16 and two last game yeah but now he's 16 and four he's definitely showing these teams he knows what he's doing as adc imagine dropping 32 kills in two games like absolutely it's, it's, crazy you're just sitting there like hmm i guess i run the show yeah exactly <laughs> so congrats to the seawall team going flawless here in regular season not dropping a single map as they go 10 and 0 in game count and 5 and 0 in series count as they do look to advance the playoffs as a number one seed from their division so very very good stuff from the st Clair saints in that regard but we actually don't have a crazy amount of time here on on the mic right now because mm -mm. we got to go set up for overwatch we do i have to direct again <laughs> <laughs> that is what we like here i'll still be on the mic here for you guys we're gonna have dan coming back over here and we are gonna uh, break down another overwatch game against usf that's gonna be coming through at 5 p.m so mm -hmm. if you guys are still here go grab a bite to eat it's around dinner time right now so you can go grab a bite to eat and whatnot uh probably you know gonna go to McDonald's sit down again. get a drink and uh you can actually come back here for this 5 p.m game overwatch we're gonna have a lot of good action coming up and it should actually be a really good game i think these two teams are very evenly matched mm -hmm. um one last thing that i would like to mention hutchinson did play extremely well oh yeah That's i'm extremely well. proud of them they put up a really good fight especially picking up those kills after not being able to do as much damage early game they definitely played and showed them that they know what they're doing and i'm proud of both teams so congrats to both yeah, congrats to both teams and for sure. So without further ado, we are going to send this one over to a quick little break. Actually, we think we're going to end things down here for a minute because we do got to switch over to Overwatch. Yes, So we, we are going to shut things down here for a few minutes. Stay with us, though. Go get your drink. Go use the washroom. Do whatever you need to do. My name is Jackson Fry Brown. Join alongside Kaylee, and we'll be right Hello. back with you guys in just a little while. Bye.
Phase go down like this. Phase so, so weak. One more hit and he's down. That is going to be clearly a warrior able to find that pick. Fresh will be here for a trade. Will Fresh be able to find it? Doesn't look to be the case as of yet. That is another one and they're coming through for Fresh. So he will actually end up finding that pick. And two on this side for the Saves will find that one. 16 to 4 is the kills here right now for St. Clair. It was looking good for Hutchinson a little bit earlier on in the game. But as of lately, St. Clair has really started to run with it. We do see the Zeri going in 1v2 wow. here. Was able to get the Lucian out with her ulti and the Q. And then we do see her chase down. Oh. The Nautilus, and but it is at least something to get a little bit of push. Does look like the Aureli is going to go on fresh here, and he has to try and fight for his life. Manages to get it purely just because of Conqueror and uh, Gore Drinker, and then ults in on the Lucian, get his health back just in time for Zeri to come around the corner and take wow. the last two down inhib off this play but it is going to be king magma there with some damage but no it's going to be gonna completely shut kill? down that is the quadra kill clearly a warrior for the penta kill zephra trying to inflict all this damage but so many players are weak barlow has to back off the fight clearly a warrior now down to his last a little bit of hp there is a penta the kill penta. going to get a hold on the akali as she just jumps around him fresh knocks him up and secures the kill on them and then we do see the ulti from Zephyra go in and they're able to pick up two kills bot lane. It looks wow. like everybody's just dropping like flies. Yeah, like there's nobody alive right now for the side of Hutchinson. They, and nobody alive on it as well, doing so, so much damage. And this is just inches away from being the end of the game here, Kaylee. It does look like they're just going to try and focus the Nexus here, end up the game, and hopefully we'll be able to get into game two quickly. What did yes. you think about that one there? Uh, in order to deal some more damage. Looks like they're trying so hard to get a kill, to get a knockdown or knock up on her. Sai is going to have to ult and get both all the feathers out in order to take bo out both Syndra and Heimerdinger here, trying to kite as much as possible just until Ricky is able to get in and get wow. his ulti off. Wow. And that was beautiful. Of kills, he's going way in deep. He will lose his life, but this is so many shutdowns coming in favor of St. Clair, ending off all of these plays. Barlow over here alone now trying to take on these fights. So much damage inflicted. Look at that snipe. We'll get that player down now. Soul Regality here as well, looking for it. And then Barlow will find two massive picks there for the Saints. That's an ace coming through.